In order to obtain a robust design, we need a criteria to determine the quality. So in these sections, we'll discuss loss function, which is a more uh, objective criteria using uh, quadratic functions to determine, to differentiate the difference between an instant from another instance based on their uh, actual performance. Before that, we need to understand what is the parameters of a system. Uh, here we would like to classify the parameters using this uh, P diagram. Assume this is the system we are talking about. Here M is uh, signal factors. Signal factors are those who can set by the user to represent their intended response. And here input is the control factors uh, which is the parameters that can be specified freely by the designer. But uh, uh, we need to bear in mind that the cost cannot be too high. And at the bottom, this is called noise factors, which are those parameters that are difficult or very expensive to be controlled. For example, like the environments or some uh, manufacturing tolerances, you need to pay in order to reduce or to control the parameters. And why is the response of your system? Let me use uh, this uh, air conditioner as an example to explain the p-diagram. Say this is a system you want to design. We can assume the desired temperature will be the user's signal factors. Whatever he set on the temperatures, that is his intentions for the room temperature. And the response will be the actual temperature of the room. Say, what is the control factors? If you are engineers, you would like to design the systems so we can control the speed of the compressor or the power of the compressor, the flow rate, uh, the pressure, and the uh, air flow rate, etc. So these are all control factors that can be changed by the designers. However, there are some factors that you cannot control, such as the ambient temperature, what is the current temperature outside, and also the humidity, and also such as the, the room sealness, uh, how good the room is sealed. If there are some leakage, then the cooling effect will not be as good. And also how many optic, how many persons in these rooms will be also some factors that a designer cannot control. So once you understand the parameters of these systems, now you need to understand what kind of output we are talking about. Here we classify the output characteristics into quantitative and also qualitative. Quantitative quality is continuous and measurable quantity. There are several different types of uh, quantitative qualities. The first one is nominal the best, which means that your output has a specific target, such as a nominal dimension or like this example, you are designing a resistor and the uh, nominal resistance of this resistor is 20 kilo ohm. So we, you would like the output to be exactly 8 20 kilo ohms, nothing big, nothing small. And the second type of uh, quantitative quality is called smaller the better, such as the pollution of a power plant and the radiation leak of a microwave oven. You want to reduce the pollution as small as possible. So this pollution can be measured and this is a quantitative quality and you would like it to be smaller the better. The last type is called larger the better, such as uh, energy efficiency of the air conditioner or the strength of a structure. So you would like to design something, you hope the output is a quantitative quality and you hope the output will be the larger the better. This is the third type of quantitative quality. The next category of output characteristic is called qualitative quality. This is something you cannot measure using a continuous measurable quantities. For example, in the fractional problems, if you, within the specification, there's no loss. If there's outside the specification, there will be loss. So this is not the continuous criteria. 
and therefore the fractional problem is a type of uh, qualitative quality. There's a more obvious uh, example such as perfume. Whether you like or dislike this perfume is very subjective and this cannot be measured by continuous quantities. So this is also a type of qualitative quality. And there's another type of output characteristics. We call it dynamic characteristics. That when the desired output can be changed by the consumer's selection of signal factors, we call this type of problem is a dynamic problem. Since the output is not a fixed number, or the larger the better or the smaller the better. Instead, if the number can be specified by the user, so the system should follow the user's intention and keep it up to its uh, specifications, such as the temperature controller, like the air conditioners. When you set the temperature to be 25 degree, then the room temperature is supposed to be 25. But when I set it to 27, and the intention change, and the system should follow and change the system, and change the room temperature to 27 degree. And this type of output characteristics is called dynamic quality. So once you have the system and a response, you can treat the systems to be an energy transformation. They transform the input energy into the intended output, intended output over here, based on the engineering system. If it is an ideal function, then it can transfer all the input energy to the output, to the intended output energy. However, there are some imperfections for the engineering systems. Therefore, some energy will be transferred to some unexpected an expected output, we call it symptoms. And the imperfection of the transformations will cause some problem. So in a good design, we would like to reduce the amount to the unexpected output as small as possible. Using a brake uh, system design as examples, if you want to design an automobile braking system, the user's intent can be treated as the depth he step on the braking pedals. Uh, the heavier he step on it, which means that he would like to stop the vehicle faster. Only a little bit, basically he just want to reduce the speed. Then there are some hydraulic energy help to stop or reduce the speed of the car. So for a good braking system design, all the energy should be transferred to the expected output which is stop or reduce the speed of the vehicle smoothly. However, there are some unexpected output such as noise, vibration, heat, which will consume some of the input energy and this is something you want to reduce. And let's discuss about the parameters of these systems. There are some control parameters or control factors such as you can specify the material of the lining pad. And also you can design the surface of the braking disc. These factors will affect the braking distance of your uh, design. And all these factors can be specified by the designers. So we call it control factors. There are some noise factors such as the road conditions. It can be on a very uh, smooth road or it can be a sandy road and also the environment will change the braking distance as well such as whether it is raining, it is wet or the, uh, the condition of your lining pad uh, if it is a brand new and the braking distance will be different from a worn one. These are all noise factors which cannot be controlled by the designer. We classify these noise factors into three categories. The first one is called external noise factors. These are some sources of variabilities from outside of the product, such as the environment that I just mentioned in the braking systems, the temperature, the outside temperature, the humidity, 
or some uh, interference from the electromagnetics, which will affect your system output, but cannot be controlled by the designers. These are called external noise factors. The second one is called internal noise factors, or you can call it deterioration noise factors. These noise factors due to aging of the product, such as fatigue. When you use something for a long time, there will be some fatigue uh, for your properties. There will be some worn out or wearing of your part. These are called internal noise factors. And the third one is called unit to unit or manufacturing noise factors. These noise factors are due to the process non-uniformities uh, during the manufacturing process and some drifting such as dimensional tolerances or batch to batch material variations. These are something caused during the manufacturing process. There's a reason why we call it manufacturing noise factors. And if you go back to the automobile braking systems, you can try using that as an example. What type of noise factors for this example, such as road condition? I think it's very obvious road condition is something outside of the product. This is called external noise factors. How about wear of lining? You can easily understand this is caused by using the part for a long time and cause some the worn out of the lining pad. So this is called internal noise factors. You can try on some other example by yourself.